the, the, the latest was I was in uh, Iloilo last week having breakfast in the hotel. And then a very, very polite man came up to me and he said, you know, I'd like you to visit my art gallery. I own an art gallery. Ganun, ganun. And then I saw something in his hand. Tapos parang, what, what's going on? Tapos biglang, uh, and please, can I have a selfie with you? Sabay bunot ng yakul. <laughs> May ganun siya. <laughs> so parang, <laughs> I posted that. Tapos sabi ng kaibigan ko, wow. Wait, wait, Does he whatever? bring random food products with him everywhere? In case, so meron siya mga lucky me in oh. case he runs into someone. Oh, oh. Oh. Or may milas lechon siya. Ganun ba yan? So whatever Yakult paid for that ad, it's really worth it, huh? I think so. Because I think so. Mercado is an educator and an improviser in his profession and in his real life. Hi, Gabe! Hello, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, I know that it's a longish trip because you now live yeah. in Baguio. Yeah, I've relocated to Baguio. As Why have you ago. done that? It started when I was maybe eight or nine years old. We used to, we were one of those uh, 80s families na merong Baguio. Like almost every other family dati na may Baguio home. As um, in mayaman. Oh, oh. Yeah, like, like every other. Like every other. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Pero kasi uso yun eh. Kasi wala pa namang... Kasi di ba it's very Sharon and Gabby now. Let's yeah. go horseback yeah. riding. Baguio. Oh, oh, oh. But my dad kasi was in advertising. Mm-hmm. And for one of his rackets back in the late 70s, he did the advertising campaign for Europa condominiums. Oh. And he chose to get paid in a flat. Uh, uh, in Europa, Smart. in Baguio. Uh-oh. So, uh, growing up, we would go to Baguio mga four times a year. Tapos naalala ko, mga nine years old ako, sabi ko sa nanay ko, uh, I want to live here. And when I hit middle age, uh, wala naman akong magandang kotse, <laughs> wala akong wala akong kulasisi, wala akong chicks, wala mm-hmm. akong ano. There were circumstances in my life that led me to selling my townhouse. Mm-hmm. And when I thought of reinvesting, biglang lumabas. I used to do a real estate show. Yes. Biglang finiture namin tong property sa Baguio. And I was like... And suddenly, you took your own advice. Suddenly, I took my own advice and just went at it and decided if I'm if I'm gonna live in Baguio, it's now or never. So, that, in, that was um, three years ago. How hard was the move? Um, parang any, any major adjustments? Or is everything in Manila also in Baguio? I like Baguio. Because it's far enough, but near enough. Well, yeah, because like um, in the 80s, how long did it take to get to Baguio? About six hours. Yeah, and, and now, you know, you, you can do it in three. Do it, yeah, mm. you can do it in four, uh, mm. three and a half on if you drive on Christmas Day. I think it's a great idea because it's like having a vacation every day, except that you live there. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, And the weather really, really helps. Mas mahilig talaga ako sa malamig. Yes, and so, sa ayaw mo sa gusto, meron kang exercise kasi pataas yung, ano, right. yung lakad. Yeah, and so, was how how hard was it to leave Manila? Or was it really easy to get out of here? Kasi parang no more traffic on, that, <laughs> on, on a daily basis. Um, well, the biggest adjustment was finding a, 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 a good job because yes. here, I was only halfway out of acting and doing television work at that Mm-mm. time but I would still do a lot of hosting yes uh, a lot of corporate work yeah so so, so the rackets are manila based uh-uh. yes so anong racket sa Baguio? generally wala so I decided to set up my own ah. uh, my own new thing there so when we all move to Baguio we'll ask you for a job <laughs> <laughs> If no, because fit, yes. seriously, you know, because um, I saw you in Baguio recently, parang for sanity maintenance, it might be a good idea to move there. Or oh, at least, oh. you know, parang spend a couple of weeks in a month there. Right, Mm-mm. right. You really feel that people are more relaxed. People are less likely to, you know, to fly into a rage yes. um, there. And yeah, a lot more walking. Parang it's literally more, chill. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Oh. So apart from the the, the economic um, prospects, oh. um, 
why was it so easy to leave Manila? I seen your your kid is in his teens. He's still in yeah. school. Yeah. Well, Yuan, the only reason why I'm I, I still go to Manila right now, um, aside from uh, my mother, is my son is also finishing his grade school here. Mm-hmm. Um, because it would have been cruel to move him. Yeah. At mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> he's grade nine right now. Okay. So if I had moved him, parang kawawa naman. He's been mm-hmm. in that school since he was in. But okay. the the moment there's a uh, all summer, all Christmas vacations, and dun siya, um, in Baguio with me. It was also not difficult because I also have quite a few um, people I went to college with, friends who already settled there na rin. Married hmm. locals settled there. Okay. <laughs> and on. So aside from making new friends, and then after I moved, my brother and his family also moved. So parang, hey. <laughs> but yun nga, since people hear that you've moved and you like it, yeah. what if everybody moves there? The everybody will be there now. It will be congested and you'll want to move back here. Well, <laughs> uh, fortunately, um, the city is now uh, reacting against people like me. <laughs> And they're discouraging na, um, all this construction. The mayor, uh, tourism, etc. They're all they all seem to be focused on you know decongesting, okay. um, attracting less tourists but yes. better quality. Oh, no, no. It's weird, diba? Yung oh. parang um, we have too much tourism, we have to limit it. That yeah. that's because it became so easy to go to Baguio, and so yeah. I've experienced weekend traffic in Baguio na oh. nasa Manila ba ako? Correct, yeah. correct. Mm-hmm. It can get bad. Yeah, we want to know. We went talaga. to the Ukay Ukay in La Trinidad. Ay, the, the traffic going to La Trinidad and back. Oh, but it's still that it's still true. better than here. That is true. And if you're really stuck in traffic there, uh, pwede kang maglakad. At least in and, around, in and around the city center. What about the mumu? Diba maraming mumu sa Baguio? But before you answer that, <laughs> can we offer you a drink? A co- black coffee. Can we have black coffee, coffee for Gabe, please? Kasi di ba, you, you hear na there's plenty of haunted houses <laughs> and other areas. So, Aha. This is Gamba. Yes. Thank you, Gamba. <laughs> so, what about the Mumu situation? Well, I, I, I don't know if you remember, but I used to be with Tony Perez's group. Yes, the Spirit Questors. The, yes. yes. They never really scared me. And fortunately, I have never had a personal experience of Me mumu. too! I think I'm dense. Okay. <laughs> you know, parang siguro sinisigawan na ako ng mga mumu, wala, wala talaga ako napapansin. But my security camera caught something. <gasps> Kasi mahilig rin ako sa gadget, so okay. you, can, you can buy oh, this. Oh no, paranormal activity, what happened? What happened? You can buy these cheap Xiaomi cameras kasi yes, na. Uh-huh. It was pointed in my living room. Tapos it was, nag-timestamp eh, mga 6.50... 6.53, 6.54 in the morning on a weekday. Um, there was a huge flash outside the window. Mm-hmm. Um, you could you could see a flash coming in. And parang um, it illuminated the entire living room. And mm-hmm. you could see the window frame. So alam mong galing sa labas. Mm-hmm. But I'm on the fourth floor. Tapos wala namang katapat na building. Ganon. Uh-huh. So ano yun? Kasi it looked like really parang nag-flash yung sasakyan or whatever pero how pa- you're so high up and from I'm the on ground the fourth uh-uh. floor. You know hindi ko mapaliwanag. So it's it's not necessarily an apparition pero unexplained UFO. Ano <laughs> the UFO was flying too close to your balcony. Or yung sinasabi nila yung San Telmo, St. Elmo's Fire. Ah, St. Elmo's Fire, yeah. Hmm. I don't know, but that's the closest um Nothing more creepy than that. No, but I know, but you're protected, like me, because we are dense. Oh, so so I, I, I went along on some of those spirit quests. People oh. were hearing things, seeing things. Oh, nothing. <laughs> Wait, that's probably where we first met. That's before probably the show. That's even before we were doing a TV show. That the Manila Film Center. Yes. Did you hear or sense anything? I did. Oh, you did. I did. Mm. Um, but when they were doing that, parang most, parang 99% of the time, nothing. When they asked the medium what the name was of the spirit he was talking to, I knew the name before the medium oh. said it. But that's it. Ang um, pinaka-boring na ability ko is just knowing things but not knowing if they're true or not. I, I get that sometimes where things pop into your head. Yeah, and they turn out to be true. Yes. Ako, was... <laughs> ano, I, ha- I have an annual event where okay. suddenly, you know, um, uh, for instance, I distinctly remember Jay telling me that Mirza Season had won a palaka. 
the day before the Palancas, I told Jay, also, I guess I'll see Mirza at the Palancas because, you know, I'm going to gate crash. And then he said, oh, why did she win? I said, Gaga, you told me that she had won. Okay. And then he did not remember. Right. And then, then he said, let me call Mirza now. And he calls Mirza. And Mirza said, I want a palanca. I said, no, I distinctly recall hearing that she had won a palanca. And then she calls the office. And true enough, she had won. She just didn't get the telegram. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> that, that, that is my, uh, one of my annual psychic oh. experiences. Ako, it's less often, mga every eight years. The most distinct one was like a few years ago, in Florida, there was a nightclub. There was a yeah, it was uh, a pulse gay shooting. Nightclub. Yes, yes uh-uh. pulse. A few days before the pulse, there was an American Idol contestant or something, a reality TV contestant who was shot also in Florida. So in my dream, I was telling somebody, "Hey, have you heard about the Florida shooting?" And then the person in my dream said, "Oh yeah, that that uh, contestant." Uh-uh. And I said, "No, there's another one, the one in the nightclub." And then the next day. Oy. <laughs> the next day, I Although read, the, I read no, the, the explanation uh, no. here is there are brief time travel situations. Oh, oh. Now you just get a little ahead. Yes. Mm. Or in, in that case, it, it's not that I went there. It's probably I read the news article about it. In a, parang y- yun yung time Yeah, that's true. Uh, because, uh, well, obviously, you know, we're ahead. You know, it, it hadn't <laughs> happened there yet. Right. You were telling me about a recent creepy thing that happened where... Um, you suddenly felt very, very angry at 3 in the morning. Yes. There was somebody I hadn't been in contact with for a long time. Yeah. It was during that same period of time. I was woken up at 3 a.m. by a feeling of intense hatred. And it bothered me so much that I had to, to, to write it in a journal. Yes. And then at 6 a.m., that person messages me and said, Hey, you're the only one I can talk to about this. But at 3.30 a.m., there was an evil spirit that entered my room. And <laughs> so was it you? you? Did you I have send no this? idea. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Baka na-sense ko na may evil spirit. Kaya ako nagising or, or possibly, it's your intense hatred that manifested itself. You know, in another island of the Philippines. Oh. Yeah, so so that's so... what you can do in I know in in Baguio. You can open a whole um, <laughs> research institute for weird events because you know you'll have the time and then people are interested. You have the quiet. Yes. You have the quiet and stillness to do that in Baguio. Well, I know. Well, but before you open up the the institute for the X Files, you're also opening up a robotics lab. Oh. What is that? Well, we're opening up something called Vivi Stop Baguio. We're an international organization called Vivita. We're a physical space for where kids age nine to fifteen can work on creative projects and make things. Hmm. But by creative, we don't necessarily mean painting, writing, etc. We mean um, take something apart, put it back together again. It's hard to label it eh, because um, we exist in different countries. For example, in the Vivi Stop Honolulu that they will be putting up, they're major concentrated on dance, music, and sound. Mm-hmm. In Baguio, you know, the space will have uh, will have a laser cutter, 3D printer, craft materials, etc., uh, recycled materials. And we encourage kids to come to the center and make something. Uh, instead of uh, having kids just be good at being consumers, you know, hey, here's the latest. Yeah, BTS make or make things. Make things. So, Even so do, do they have things, to pay to get in? Yeah. It's, it's completely free. Uh, we have a membership model. More membership is free. However, we just screen. We're really looking for um, self-driven kids. Mm. We don't want. We really don't want. Na yung nanay, ano, will come and say, "Yeah, para naman tumino ka, ganyan. Para may magawa <laughs> it's ka." Not, it does, it's not a punishment or a daycare it's, center. Yes, not it's a pun- like a nest for the next tech billionaire. Ganon. Hi, no, we, but that's what will happen. The the mom, mom will say, "I want you to make him a tech billionaire." <laughs> yeah, we don't want that either. Mm-hmm. We just want you to just create even stupid complicated things <laughs> so you learn about physics you learn about all that and you're creating with your own hands because that's a great project yeah i, I hope it does well and then you replicate it all over uh, you know give kids something to do that does not require a phone right yeah. the thinking is one of the reasons why we're free is so that there is no external pressure of uh, a mother or a father saying, ang, ang, 
Nagabayad ako ng ganyan-ganyan. Anong natutunan mo? Correct. We're not even focused on outcomes. <laughs> We're not even focused on, by this time you should learn this or ganyan-ganyan. We're all about, at the age of 9 to 15, if you discover something that you're good with, with your hands, wherever you're invented, you're innovative, yeah. you did it on your own. So parang mas... Uh, long lasting yung yeah you give them the tools to 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 create what they're interested in instead of them bugging their mom na can correct. you buy me this can you buy me that oh. correct parang that's a long answer to will there be robotics yes there will be but no, that's not the robotics point robotics na parang oh you're going to start the ai apocalypse <laughs> in your ano in 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 vivita yeah. <laughs> We'll do fun things. We'll do crazy things. Um, what we did uh, um, a few weeks ago was we did a, a great big Rube Goldberg machine. Oh wow! Um, so we had um, found the objects, recycled the objects, and then parang chain reaction yun eh. So we had a team of 27 kids um, with some adults, and then the whole thing parang it was like a big domino reaction. And ultimately, you're you're, you're saying, what's that for? It's Wala lang inventiveness, fun, the joy of making, the joy which is, of science. Which is interesting because you did say that you were from the school of wala lang. Aha, I asked yes. because you were in this band, The Police. I said, so how would you describe your music? And you said, well, you know, it's wala lang. It's wala lang. <laughs> oh, I, I really like that um, thinking of putting extreme effort and attention to detail into something. Wala lang. For because the joy of just doing because it. you want to, which mm. is something that is getting lost in our world where everything is about making money off it. Correct. I, I suppose it's like somebody asking you what the purpose of your fiction is. Exactly. Or when 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 I was in UP majoring in comparative literature, mm. you will not believe the number of adults who asked me, "What do you compare?" <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but so. Before this, you were an actor yeah. slash um, comedian. Yeah. And you know, um, I have to say na all my friends who are comedians, they're not what you would expect na, you know, funny people na kayang koy. Right. No, you're no. all serious people. Yeah. The, the best comedians are serious people. And so, how did you get into acting in the first place? But before that, one of my really closest friends, and I would say a mentor who really fit that bill, was Redford White. Redford White was your mentor? Oh, yeah. Um, he was in the first sitcom I was in. It was called Pwedeng Pwede. It had Robin Padilla and mm -hmm. Redford White. And um, Redford, God bless his soul, took an interest in me. He would sometimes, you know, we would be in ABS, CBN, different dressing rooms, and then sometimes he would send his his uh, personal assistant to call me to his dressing room. And all of us would share dressing rooms, but he, as the star of that show, had his own. Yeah. And then when you walk in, he's doing Tai Chi to meditative music. Oh, things that <laughs> no. you would not suspect of Whoa. a big comedian, yeah. Coming back from uh, one Christmas vacation where we had been taped for mga three weeks, everybody's talking, oh, I went to States, I went to Las Vegas, I went to ano. Uh. And then he, I asked him quietly, where did you go for your break? Sabi niya, Prague. Okay. Ganun siyang klaseng tao. Oh. Mm -hmm. What did you do during your break? Oh, I took an intensive with Eric Morris in Los Angeles. Okay. He's the most one of the most dedicated to his craft actors I that I had ever this. worked with. Yeah. He was also a he was like a rescue diver at that. Mm, wow. Totally unexpected. And I think the biggest tragedy is that we never saw him in a dramatic role. Um, or we never saw him outside his um his persona of the 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 Bisayang yes. Bisoy. No. Oh. And he's also one of the sweetest sweetest man, a man, a man I'd ever worked with. He really took an interest in me and said, you know, uh, in, in your career, mawawalang ka ng trabaho. During that time, study. And he said, don't study here. Leave the country. And that's oh, why I took improv workshops. That's and that's how it started. Improv. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. And then eventually through the years, he would just, he would just call. Tapos sabi, oh, hello. Sabi, Bro, I love you. Ah. Tapos yun, yun lang. Bye. Ganong klaseng nice, tao. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. A sweet, So sweet, now I'm sorry I never guy. met him. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the years before he died, he had an orphanage. Ganon talaga. Mm -hmm. Wow. One of the most unheralded. <laughs> yes, because all we hear of artista are who they're sleeping with and what they've bought. Right. Mm -mm. Right. Well, he bought a future. <laughs> For kids, yes, in his that's orphanage. wonderful. Ganun siyang klaseng tao. Yeah, so that's one of your first acting gigs. Yes. So you did the TV show. Yeah. How did it proceed from there? Well, what happened is I, I I've always been a theater actor since I was um, 
you know, uh, early grade school. It was during the cast party of one of the plays I did for Tanghalang Ateneo where the ABS, where an ABS-CBN scout saw me making a fool of myself trying to impress a girl. Tapos sabi niya, can you do a screen test? Oh, so you were, ano, you were discovered. I was the discovered. The classic way, oh, yes. Oh, uh-huh. oh, oh. You know, I did some screen tests and eventually, even an audition in front of at that time sino Mr. M sino Charo mm-hmm. mga ganon and they signed me up and then decided that I was a comedian parang okay. ganun sila eh. parang yun ang packaging nila mm-hmm. and then so it became easy to be cast because you were I was signed to like a 3 year or 5 year contract I don't remember so they felt a little bit obliged to cast you but you still at least to push you in their own shows right but of course it was still the decision of the of the directors mm-hmm. whether they would get you or not so I I got that sit and then you also did um, the famous commercial. So I have to ask you, how many times a day do you get asked, okay ka ba chan? About three times a day. To I'm, this I'm day, huh? Yeah, and and, and yeah. that ad has been gone for a long time. For uh, the, I did 12 ads for Yakult. The first one was 16 years ago. Yikes. 16 years ago. And, and, and those 12 commercials were just maybe five-year period. So it's been 10 it's years six, since eh. the last one came out and yeah. people still remember it. Yeah. I think kasi yung brand loyalty rin ng mga tao. Parang it's just one of those brands na meron kang warm yeah, parang, fuzzy ano, parang feeling. Parang Colgate, Coke. Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. It did me well. People remember me for it. And I think people have warm, fuzzy feelings and make illusions that I'm a nice guy just because of that commercial. But with then, one of the side effects of being in the public eye, I'm sure, you know, you've experienced it na. You hear people talking about you as if you were not there. As if there. I was not there. Yeah. Um, I'm in the next table. And then they start talking about me in a loud voice, trying to attract my attention attention but not in a nice way. Why do people do that? What's the point? Are you supposed to go and challenge them to a fist fight? Why do they <laughs> I do don't that? know. I, I, or, or I guess they're just too shy to say I want a photo or they just want to show that they recognize you but you're not worthy of a photo. <laughs> Yung parang bang, <laughs> yeah, kilala kita pero hindi nyo kong papaselfie. Oo. Oh, oh. yeah. The latest was I was in uh, Iloilo last week having breakfast in the hotel and then very very polite man came up to me and he said, you know, I'd like you to visit my art gallery. I own an art gallery. Ganun, ganun. And then I saw something in his hand. Tapos parang, what, what's going on? Tapos biglang, uh, and please, can I have a selfie with you? Sabay bunot ng Yakult. <laughs> May ganun siya. <laughs> so parang, I posted that. Tapos sabi ng kaibigan ko, wow. Why, why, Does he whatever? bring random food products with him everywhere? In case, so may siya mga lucky me, in <laughs> case he runs into someone. Oh, oh, oh. Or may milas lechon siya. <laughs> 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 so whatever Yakult paid for that ad, it's really worth it, huh? I think so because I, to I, this day, to oh. this day, and I think even now they don't have sustained uh, advertising campaigns. It yeah. seems, at least on TV, maybe they do that every three years or so. So, mm-hmm. but it's one of those things that I'm very glad to be associated with a brand. It's a good brand. It does well, good to the world. Yeah. Well, by the way, so so our theme is sanity maintenance, and I remember reading that pro. Probiotics really are essential to sanity maintenance. Oh, oh, Something about your stomach affects may gut you know, your brain. Uh, may gut brain though. Yeah, your 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 state of mind. Oh, As in, oh. you know, your stomach is well. You know, your your general state is good. And so, so you you were under contract and you did a lot of shows. Yeah, and I, you I, did I, ads. I did sitcoms. I did <clears throat> teleseries. I did ads. I did movies. You know, some of the thrilling things was. Um, just working with noted names. Yeah, and um, so did you have any expectations about what show business would be like? Or you thought na, oh God, I'm going to be surrounded by stupid people. <laughs> you know, surprisingly, when you come in with that expectation, yes, there are there are some who aren't uh, all that smart, but there are many, many who are intelligent. You can have really, really good conversations with who read great books and all of that. Um, yeah, like you just told us about Redford White. So yeah. I did not know that about oh, him. Oh. Yeah. I think when I started, I was very greedy. Parang, okay, I have a sitcom. Next, I want a talk show, with event- which eventually happened when we did the uh, points of view. Yeah. I-, I want a movie and I want a cable show and I also want to be a VJ. And then that all happened. I, <laughs> I was a v- VJ. Very 2000s, 90s, term, yes. No? Yeah, um, because remember when MTV ruled the World. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I That's did so that for one of the TFC channels of mm-hmm. uh, ABS. I was even a side court reporter for the PBA. Wow. I had my own talk show on Channel 11 called Gave Me a Break, which lasted <laughs> two seasons. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I did a public affairs show called Noy Pi Ikaw ba to? So after after the news, it was a social experiment thing. I was in a love scene with Joyce Jimenez. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I did a lot. And also, don't forget, you were in a band. I was in a band. And you did cover a cover of... Uh, Edgar Mortis. Uh, Edgar Mortis. Edgar Mortis' yes. Pledge of Love. Yeah. Oh. But I always felt at that time that this was not enough. Because when I would watch other shows, I would say, hey, that should be me. That's a role that I can do. That's, Competitive. Ano, Sobra. And parang I said, okay, I, I get character actor roles, but when will they realize that I can also do dramatic? Ah, yung parang bang Adam Sandler, ganun. Parang na. ganun. Parang where is my uncut gems? Uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh-uh. And then I just decided that this, I, I can't base my self-esteem on this. And I was getting so nip, I was getting impatient. I started hating getting calls from casters. Eh parang, Mali na yun eh. Oo oh, nga, oo oh, nga. Oh, oh, because uh, people in your in your old profession prayed to get calls prayed. from casters, yes. I, I, I hated it because in this industry, no matter if you're a big name or a small name, you will still get calls at 1am saying, available po you, taping mamaya. <laughs> at alas 4. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi, ito naman. 6am call time, bataan. Please bring white suit. Uh, eh, 1 a.m. na. Pa, well, yes, because I always have a white suit ready. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, parang, once I find myself not being grateful for these things, these breaks that others would really, really want, parang, I had a good run. Okay na yun. Mm-hmm. Um, around this time, you were already into improv. I was already into improv. Why did you decide on improv as one of your, the things you will learn during the shooting break. Uh. <laughs> I was always a fan of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Oh! Um, which was a short form improvisation. Where they just started. give you a line and then you know, just spin yeah. it out, see what you, happens. You, you yes. do different scenes. Mm-hmm. I was in Singapore one time uh, browsing through, I think it was Borders or something. Mm-hmm. And I came across a book which said, uh, the title was Truth in Comedy. Okay. Eh, in actor circles, yung mga, you're always looking for truth. Truth. Yes, Parang yes. very Eric Morris being and doing yan. Ah. So it really, really intrigued me that there was a concept of truth in comedy. The more I read it, the more I was hooked. So in 2001, I just decided to take a long workshop and then put together a group called Spit. Silly workshop. People's Improv Theater. Yeah. I set that up, um, but only after angry calls from Redford White and Leo Martinez. <laughs> they were like, pa workshop workshop ka dyan sa ano, abroad? Tapos wala kang gagawin? Mahiya ka naman. So sabi ko, yes, yes sir. I will set up groups. I will set up ano. That started, uh, um, yeah, 2001, 2002. Now in 2020, Spit is still going strong, but we set up a school called Third World Improv. Yes, and you students. also give um, workshops to corporations. Corporations, right? as in, um, look for how it. can improv help um, corporate people? Corporations really look for things that teach them agility, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, collaboration, better communication. Parang yun na yung mga skill sets. And improv is one of the quickest ways to do it, um, to give them an experience of what an agile culture is like, what a co- what a collaborative culture looks like. Some companies have sent us their all their frontliners to to deal with that, you know, how to deal with irate customers, how mm-hmm. to deal with unexpected situations. So that field is called applied improvisation. From what I've seen of improv, I'm, I'm guessing it's also excellent therapy, huh? <laughs> For, for your personal life. A lot of people come to us um, with that intention, with that desire. But we were very responsible and we said there are no approved uh, therapeutic claims uh, okay. of this. No approved therapeutic claims. <laughs> so, but we just say it's a good thing to do in a community where we really strive to provide a safe space. And when you can express Um, accept and build on whatever your idiosyncrasies, whatever your tr- your your truths are. Because the motto of improv is yes and whatever you are, whatever you offer, I will accept it and I will build on it. And so you've done one-man shows about your personal life. Holy wow! Yeah. Yeah, and um, a lot of people you say now you have to do a one-man show about your personal life. They're like, they're fear exposure. You know, uh-huh. most people are afraid to. 
um, really expose themselves. Although may ano may contradiction yan because in the Philippines, you know, we're the world capital of oversharing. oversharing. But at the same time, we don't want to expose the things that we personally find, you know, icky and right. complicated. Yeah. Right. So I had seen a one-woman show by um, Rachel Paris in in Edinburgh. When I went to the Edinburgh Fringe. That year, parang yun ang usong format. And the, hers, the performance memoir. Oh, oh her, that, that show was called Best Laid Plans. And I had never seen a show like that here. Right. So I wanted to be, you know, one of the first to do that. Yes. That mix of poignant, truthful, sort of like uh, a, a memoir. Also, I saw it as a lot less vulnerable than actually writing your memoirs. You, I think you're more vulnerable than me because the written text can be passed on. You know what protects us? Oh. Hindi naman nagbabasa yung mga tao. <laughs> <laughs> so kahit isulat mo, hindi naman yung babasahin. Eh. Oh, so I did a one-person, a personal memoir, an autobiographical uh, one-person show. But I did it in Pineapple Lab, in Poblacion. Mm-hmm. And you know, at best, that is 30 people. And I didn't publicize it. <laughs> So I had exactly ah, so, 30 people. Mm-hmm. So medyo, well, yeah, I'll do a one-man uh, show, pero I won't tell anyone that I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> it is still full. Yeah. It is still full. And then, okay, you have said that, you know, fatherhood was kind of thrust upon you. Whew. You were not sure if you were ready to become a dad. Yeah. And so wh- why were you afraid of becoming, you know, a dad? Because it was my ex-wife who had wanted to adopt. Mm-hmm. And with the way things go in, in, in the adoption circles, you know, you're waiting, tapos biglang meron na. <laughs> and you have to make a quick uh, so decision. So you, know, you, you did the, the official um, adoption process because alam yeah. mo naman sa pamilya, uh, sa, sa Pilipinas, diba yung parang, um, you, you find a relative na ang dami-dami mong anak, akin na lang yung isa, and boom! <laughs> yun okay, na yeah. nga. It was a little different. Um, ours was um, through the church and then through DSWD. We found ourselves there and then parang a year and a half after um, taking the child my ex-wife left okay and so i think that was more of the part na parang wait a minute suddenly i'm I, i'm full-time sole i'm parent. a single parent yes I, I, mm-hmm. i'm a single parent but it's the best thing that's happened to me i, I like single parenting because you can't pass the pass the buck to anyone else mm-hmm. you, you, you're, you're completely in charge. You're completely in charge. Yeah. And I think once you realize na ganon, then you become a better... You either rise up to the challenge or you don't. I, I, I regard you as a highly successful father because you told me that whenever you and Bito go to Baguio, he doesn't say na, yay, Burnham Park! Or yay, whatever. He says, salad! Yay, salad! <laughs> so, that, that's a good kid. <laughs> I think one of the best stories uh, which just happened yesterday was he sends me a message and he says, Hey, can you talk to Teacher Blank about adoption? Oh, just talk to him. And then eventually when we talked last night, why do you want me to talk to him about adoption? Well, um, well, that teacher is, 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 is gay, um, but eventually he wants to adopt. And he was asking me, what's it like being an adopted child? So I think you should talk to him and tell him, you know, how, how it is to be a parent because I've already talked to him. That- wow, your child is an adult. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that being adopted is cool. And then my son told me, I really like that when you raised me, you were using adoption, you know, even before I knew what it meant. So basically, when people would teach me about being adopted, I'm like, yeah, so what? It's a harmless word Yeah, it's, it's natural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, the only problem with you is that you're annoying. And then he left. <laughs> so, but, may mix na we but, can talk yeah, about. So, so you, have, uh, no, you have high grades from your kid. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So yeah, I like, I like being a dad. And uh, even at he's turning 16 in a few months, um, even if I hate the mood swings, I hate the irrational temper. Yeah, um, well, adolescents are supposed to be a handful. They, so, they you know, are. all things considered, you're still speaking, aren't you? Yeah. So, that's, that's an achievement. Yeah, and so, how do you manage to maintain your sanity in an increasingly bonkers world? I think one of the easiest ways is don't feel you have to keep up with everything. Really deciding what will affect you and what will not. Um, basically choosing what's important to you. Oh, and then indoor air quality is important. Hmm. 
of course, of course. <laughs> there are more and more studies right now that really, really show that air quality, um, among other things, of the obvious, ano, really also affects your mental health. So, That's true, cause you know, if you sit around breathing carbon monoxide all day, you know, it, it's like um, failing to commit suicide <laughs> because oh. you're, you, oh. it's toxins, yeah, and and you know, it helps to be in Baguio. Clean yeah. air. Okay. I, I like to embrace that. It's better to be, you know, make average, truthful, little, uh, mindful choices. Right. It just makes for a more sensible life. Yes, live sensibly. Oh. Yeah. Thanks very much for Thank coming you. over on a Friday when you could be in Baguio. <laughs> yes.